I heard someone say make it short and sweet, so I'll try to do that. I should give a brief history of the Lord's Open and Comprehensive School. During the 20s through the 40s, the black students in Middletown and surrounding areas attended Middletown School number 126. The C stood for college. The building was a three-room wooden structure located on East Lake Street. Later on, due to increasing enrollment, some classes were held at Calvary Baptist Church and in a bungalow on the property that was purchased by the school. Mrs. Letitia Reeves Henry, principal at the time, was instrumental in having the school name changed. In the late 20s, a black man named Louis Romani became the state's first and only black lawyer. Henry set a campaign to have the school named for Reddy. After a long and hard fought battle, the school was named Lewis L. Reddy. When, when the new building was built in 1952, the white community wanted to change the name, but blacks all over the state fought and won the right to dedicate the new school to Lewis L. Reddy. grades 1 through 12. Mr. Douglas King was principal before Dr. Alfred G. Walker. The first graduating class in 1954 was very small. There were only six in the class. You will hear their names read later. The trustees who served during these years were Mr. Edward Field, Mr. Oscar Todd, Mr. Ryder, Mr. Wallace Sudler, Mr. Howard Congo, Mr. Marshall Williams, Mr. William Davis, Mr. Otis Jefferson, Mr. Homer Miles, Mr. Clarence Marvel, and Mr. Stork Parker. Most of them are deceased. Three of them are still with us, Homer Miles, Otis Jefferson, and Stork Parker. In 1954, Brown versus State Board of Education declared segregation unconstitutional in the United States. We didn't integrate immediately in Delaware. However, in 1964, seven pupils from Reading went over to Middletown, number 60. They were Sandra Williams, Bay Watson, Clarence Saunders, Victor Martin, Dickie Blackson, George Davis, and Harry Blackson, Jr. For the next three years, both elementary and high school students began to go across town to the all-white school. It wasn't easy for them, but they persevered and excelled in all areas especially sports. In 1966, the grade system, one grade at a time, was introduced, but this didn't work because of the tax disputes in the various towns. We integrated totally in 1968. At the present time, there are two elementary schools, the Kindergarten, Reading Middle, and Middletown High School in the Abiquinimic District. In some ways, we have profited by integration, and in some ways, we haven't. We know that what we learned in our black schools and churches were the things that made us successful as adults. And it is our responsibility. <laughs> and it is our responsibility to pass that same pride on to our children and grandchildren. Let us encourage them to be great and remember that all things are possible if they believe. The memories of this night will linger on and on in our memory because we have met old friends and former students that we haven't seen for 10 or 20 or even 30 years. And as Dr. Waters would often say, I'm reminded of the words of Helen Steiner Rice on true happiness. Happiness is just waking up and beginning the day by counting our blessings and kneeling to pray. It's giving up thoughts that breed discontent and accepting what comes as a gift heaven sent. It's giving up wishing for things we have not and making the best of whatever we've got. For it's by completing what God gives us to do that we find real contentment and happiness too. These facts were compiled by Mr. Ralph Peters, Ms. Bertha Johnson, and myself.
that was very complete. I think some of us can take that home to those who did not come tonight and sort of uh, remind them of what part of your black heritage is.